this video, we'll be going over how to set up uh, DM1 and DM2 pop-up warnings to the user with the Quick Tool. Um, so as you can see, I have the Quick Tool open, and we have our video example, which we've been using for these video tutorials. Um, so a couple things before we get too much into setting up DM1 and DM2 messages to pop up. So in the first video of new project configuration, I mentioned that when you're creating your project, it's helpful to create it as an advanced template. Uh, so this is where DM1 and DM2 messages and pop-ups to the user is where it's important that you have created a project as an advanced template because I won't go over how to add this in as a basic template and create all of the additional scripts and things that are necessary to do from a basic template to get this working um, because when you when you create a project as an advanced template it does that for you automatically so if you're interested if you have a basic template and you absolutely need to add this in you can create a test advanced template and try to trace through some of the additional things they use to uh, get the dm1 and dm2 messages pop-ups and things working but we'll just go over this assuming you've created an advanced template so the first thing we can do is in this project configuration editor uh, we have you you have to add the controller that you want to receive dm1 and dm2 messages from controller or controllers so it it may be more than one um, so as we showed before you can add an additional controller in your network by um, hitting add ecm giving it a name and giving it a source address and you know adjusting these so uh, you should watch the, the first video about setting up, creating a new project and configuring if you're not sure what these are. I go over it more in that video. Um, so after we have made sure that our ECM that we want to re <coughs> receive these DM1 and DM2 messages from is added, in this list so in either channel one or channel two depending on what can bus you're using we can hit okay um and now we can also come and click on the main screen here to come to our layout designer screen designer or uh, layout designer here and you'll see this ef feature added for if you've created the project with an advanced template. So if we expand this using the little plus button, um, we'll see three screens. So these are the screens that are going to be used for the pop-up. So the first screen is a red color here, and this is the actual pop-up screen. So when a DM1 message is received, it will pop up with this screen. And if we double click over to the right, um, you'll see here the EF SPN description will be shown there, and we'll go over how to set that up in a second. Here, the FMI field or description. Uh, here is the system. So this is what the, the name that we gave in the project editor will be shown here. So engine, if it's received from source address zero, it'll be engine. If it's received from source address one, transmission, or any other, it'll say unknown. Um, okay, then after, you'll see here, we can acknowledge that so the user can close the pop-up. Then at any point, they could get to this EF screen fault list and this screen will show in a, <clears throat> in a menu way here, it will show all of the DM1 and DM2 messages that are currently in your system. 
So DM1s are active DM1s. They are currently happening. And DM2s mean that the fold is not currently happening, but it has happened in the past. So in, in this menu, the DM1s will be, I believe, a red color. And then the DM2s will just be kind of this like normal white color, if I remember right. Um, so the user can scroll up and down this list. If they select exit, it just leaves. If they select details, it goes to this screen where, again, we have, uh, you know, the description of the SPN, the description of the FMI, which is the failure mode effect, um, the system, you know, engine transmission, the ECM address. So this is the source address of the uh, the thing that sent it out, the ECM that sent out the DM1 or DM2. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what that is. <laughs> uh, so in, in DM2s, so if you click on the description of a DM1, this clear will not be shown because you can't clear DM1 messages since they're currently happening. Um, but for DM2s, since they are not currently happening and have just happened in the past and is more of a, a log of what has happened in the machine, the user can clear those. And if they press clear, a pop-up will ask them if they want to actually clear it, and then they can hit OK, and it will be cleared out of this fault list here. So they'll no longer see that when they go to that list. Um, Okay, so that covers what it's going to look like. So how do we set up the messages we want shown with that feature? So what we can do is coming from going back to this main screen, uh, we click on this little stethoscope icon. Um, and a little message comes up saying diagnostic code editor. And that's what we're going to use here. So on the left, you can see we have diagnostic SPNs, and on the right, we have FMI and generate pop-up. So let's go ahead and just add a few here. So if we click add from database, you'll see that just like the J1939 signal database, uh, the tool stores a database of all of the general J1939 SPN uh, descriptions. So, you know, um, if we look for 190, it's engine speed, just like in the J1939 SPN. So we could add um, really any SPN we wanted. If you know what SPN you're looking for, you can organize them by SPN number. Um, you know, you can also do a quick search if you want. Um, so I searched for 190 before, if you know, you know, obviously the description of it, you can, uh, just look for it by alphabetic order. Um, all right. So we can, for instance, add a few. So we'll add SPN 1427 engine cylinder number 15 ignition timing is what it's given. Um, all right, so once we have this, this is the SPN that's going to be sent over with the DM1 and DM2 messages. So if you don't know how the DM1 and DM2 messages are set up in J1939, I would recommend doing some more research on that. I will also try to create a video uh, about the DM1 and DM2 messages and how they're set up and transmitted. But in short, a DM1 and DM2 message, they're two separate messages, but they <coughs> will, they're transmitted in one lawn message. So DM1 is a single message, but it can grow and shrink depending on how many active faults there are at the time. So if there's only one active fault, for instance, or no active faults, the message will be really small. But if there's 50 active faults, it's going to grow to be a very big message. 
um, the data that it transmits is it'll say, okay, I'm a DM1. Um, it's going to transmit some other information about warning lights and things like that. But essentially, it will give the user, give data about an SPN and an FMI. So those are transmitted in pairs. So it's going to say, okay, I have an error in SPN 1427, and the FMI with that is FMI 2. Okay, so they're always transmitted in SPN FMI pairs. So an SPN may have multiple FMIs that it's experiencing at the, at the moment. So it may happen that SPN 1427 has FMI 2 and FMI uh, 4 or 14 or whatever. Um, so the, the SPN hopefully is sort of clear. It defines a specific sensor, sender, function in the machine. And that's what we see in this SPN description. So the FMI is called the failure mode identifier. And this identifies what has failed on this specific SPN, or in this case, the SPN 1427 correlates to engine cylinder 15. Um, so what is exactly failed here? And that's what the FMI tells us. So we can select different FMIs that we want to be shown to the user. So the engine cylinder might have an FMI 2, an FMI 3, and an FMI 7 that we want shown. So we can identify these, and then on the right, we can say whether or not we want it to generate a pop-up. And that pop-up is this screen here. So if, if we choose not to, uh, to generate a pop-up, so if we say false in these, you know, we can say true to some and false in others. Um, when the, the display receives a DM1 or DM2, from SPN 1427 and FMI 2, 3, or 7, if there's a pop-up generated, it's going to show this screen with that information whenever it comes in, if it's a DM1. Uh, if we have chosen not to generate a pop-up, it will still show the, the failure in this fault list here, but there will just be no pop-up to the user generated. So the user could always come into this fault list uh, in our in our advanced template there's a a menu here so this diagnostics on this screen links to this fault list so the user could always view the fault list and see those faults but there won't be any pop-up generated so that's what the pop-up does here um, okay so let's do one more let's add our own so say we have an spn that our engine manufacturers told us uh is spn 120. um so you'll see here we've added spn 120 it's added here and the description is just spn 120 full description so we might want to change that so we'll just say this is our uh, left uh, left wheel pressure. How about? Um, okay, and we'll say, you know, they've told us SPN 120 or left wheel pressure, and we want to know if the wheel pressure is low. Left wheel, so maybe to better define, I should say, left wheel air pressure. And we want to know if it's low, and they say, okay, well, if it's low, we're going to send FMI 1. Um, and we want to generate a pop-up, so there we go. Maybe in, if it's, maybe there's another problem. If it's uh, low, it'll be FMI 1. If it's, like, exploded, it'll be FMI 8. So maybe we want to monitor for both those situations. So we can set those and 
tell it our description, and give it the FMIs. Now, you, if you've noticed before when we came to our descriptions here, there's a description for the SPN, which is what we have set up here. And there's also a description for the FMI. So where does that come from, right? Because we've, we've looked at, you know, we're just sort of giving it numbers here for FMIs. So the FMI numbers are defined by J1939 as sort of standard numbers. So one sort of means something. Now in the tool, we've generalized this, um, but let's look at where, what these mean and how to change them. So if we come here to the value table editor, um, I won't get into what value tables are. Uh, that's a, another video, so please go watch that video if you don't know what a value table is. But if we look at this FMI table, this is what is going to define what those values are translated to. So you'll see here we have a value of zero is going to be data high most. A value of one is going to be data low most. A value of two, data erratic. Um, all the way to one F, which is in hex. So zero X, one F. Um, so if we come here, go to the hex tool. So one F should correlate to 31, which if we look back, in our FMI list, the highest possible FMI is 31. So these value tables, oops, wrong one. This value table correlates to <clears throat> what the FMI description will read. So the FMI description, if given an FMI of zero, is going to read data high most. Um, we can change this though if we want, but we need to make sure that all of the DM1 messages, so if we have multiple DM1 messages using the same FMI, we need to come up with a description that works for all of them. So for instance, if we have this engine cylinder 15 using FMI1 and this left wheel air pressure, um, we need to come up with a common description or else use another FMI. So every everything that uses an FMI is going to get its description from this value table. But if we did want to change it, we could say, um, you know, if we said, okay, uh, we can agree that FMI one is low pressure. Um, check with maintenance or uh, yeah, low pressure, check. Um, so we've gone ahead and changed this, and from now on, when FMI1 is comes up, it will give us this description. We can also add additional values if we want. So we can go ahead and say, uh, go ahead and say 32. Since we ended at 31, we'll say 32, which is uh, 0x20. 20 and we can you know if we wanted to say use this for the tire pressure we could say you know tire pressure low check or fill immediately yellow so we can set up our own fmis if you have that sort of control about the dm1 messages being sent from the controllers um all right, so that should wrap up this video. Um, please tune in for future videos. Thank you.